Chisos makes high-end boots focusing on a quality build with the modern comfort of their own removable insole. They've also expanded into new territory with ostrich and a roper style boot. In today's video, we're going to take an in-depth look at this Chisos King Roper. Let's get into it. I'm just here to connect ya And then I'll be on my way Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig. Thank you for clicking on this video today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It goes a long way to helping out this channel. Today, I'm so excited to have Chisos back on the channel. One, because this is their first Roper boot. They've had lots of requests, and they finally made a Roper boot. And number two, this is their first ostrich boot and they went all in on the ostrich too because even the top up here is smooth ostrich everywhere on the outside is ostrich so i'm so excited to get into this but first to be completely transparent chiso sent me these boots for the purposes of this video and they've also sponsored videos in the past still something that you should know huge thanks to chisos now let's get into the details of this boot and get straight into the rundown This is the Chisos King Roper, and it's full quill ostrich around the foot here, and you do have some of the smaller quills around the counter. It is beautiful. Many other companies would call this color honey or cognac, but Chisos is calling it burnt orange, and that's in honor of the University of Texas. Chisos owner, Will Roman, talked to me on the phone, and he said it had to be burnt orange, Aggies be damned. In traditional roper style, this does have the wider round toe, often known as a roper toe. The King Roper is also coming in at 10 inches tall, and it features smooth ostrich up here on the top and along the pull tabs as well. It looks great. Also in traditional roper fashion, we have a one inch stacked leather heel down here. For an outsole, it is a 10 iron leather outsole with a bunch of lemon wood pegs in here and a few brass nails as well. You can also see the Chisos Reserved stamped down here in the outsole as well. This is their second reserve boot. The first one was the alligator and this time it's the ostrich all around. So this is definitely a special boot and maybe a limited run here. I believe Will told me that they're only making 50 to begin with. On the inside, it's a hung leather lining that uses that red leather we know Chisos for, and it also has covered up the pull straps on the inside as well. So not only does it cover up the seam that might run against your leg in some other boots, but it's also covering up the pull strap which on some brands of boots can also rub against your leg. And because this comes down a little bit shorter, it also has a more narrow opening than the previous Chisos. Of course, as an insole, we have their removable insole that is special to Chisos and Chisos alone. It's got that red leather lining that's really, really soft up here on the top and then a combination of foam down here on the bottom. And then underneath that, you do have the traditional hard leather insole. The Chisos King Roper is coming in at $1,200 and it's made in Mexico. Now it's time to try this boot on and see how it looks and feels. All right, I got on the Chisos King Roper right now and they feel great. The first thing that I'm noticing while wearing this boot is the fact that I don't feel quite as tall as the Chisos number one, obviously, Jeremiah. I mean, you have an extra half an inch on those, but then you gotta remember how thick the insole is too. It felt like, you know, you're really standing on top of the boot in the Chisos number one. Here in the Roper, wow, that insole is awesome. I feel like this is the perfect place for the Chisos insole is inside a roper. Feels great. One thing that uh, Will mentioned on the phone, Will, the owner of Chisos, is that the heel measurement in the back is just a little bit more narrow. And I'm definitely noticing that it is cupping my heel a little bit more on the sides, 
but it's a nice comfortable hug. You know what I'm saying? I'm still getting the kind of heel slip that I would expect and that what I would want. So it's a nice different change from the number one that uh, you guys might enjoy quite a bit on these ropers. The ostrich leather, let's talk about that because it's not as supple as some other ostrich leathers that you may have tried in the past. Uh, of course, you know, that could differ between boots. Like you might find a more supple one uh, depending on the leather. It is a natural product. You got to remember that. Um, but, you know, I have experienced other boots that are more supple than this as far as ostrich is concerned. But it does feel like it will break in really nice. All right, here is the POV shot can definitely tell it's a roper by that toe shape. It's a good look. That's a good look there. And I'm liking how it works with this uh, Levi's 517 jean as well. Now it's time to see how these break in. So let's get out in the world, go on an adventure, and do an extended test. I took these chisos to the western part of New York State where I grew up and explored a local cheese plant, East Hill Creamery, in the town of Perry. New York State is the fourth largest producer of dairy products in America and the East Hill Creamery has been awarded as one of the best. Since much of the factory is treated like a clean room in a lab, my wife and I were led to a break room where we suited up with special coats and hair nets to protect the cheese. I also had to put booties over these chisos as well. Then we walked into a wonderland of cheese making by our tour guide and East Hill Creamery owner, Gary Burley, who showed us the machines used in every process of making cheese, but the most magical part of it all was when he led us to the cheese caves. So we got basically two different types of cheese we make. We make the raclette and we make the compte. By aging it different days, then we have eight different types of cheeses that fit a different taste profile. You can hear about being a flipping these wheels, so these have to be flipped twice a week because what happens is the bottoms are doing the mortgage so it's damp. So we set it set there and then we have to flip it because it gets damp on the bottom so you gotta let it air and then she mortgages it this the next time through and flip it and then the next time she's through she mortgages this. A so lot of labor. Yeah, every section we, we know what wheel it is because sometimes these get smeared or you can't read them. So we know where every, every, every wheel is doing. There were more caves too with even older cheeses they call cave monsters. This cheese here is close to five years old. So. And so you can see defects here. It's beginning to get just like a as we get old, we have defects and they're beginning to pronounce. But Gary had a more impressive batch to show us. Oh, it does, <laughs> but it's amazing cheese. <laughs> That's winter milk. So that was March. So it wasn't on grass, it was on dry hay. And it, where it was in the cave, which was right along here, it's more in the winter time, it's more damp back in here um, because of insulation and it just created an a entirely different type of cheese versus these, even though we use the same recipe to make it. And that's the magic of making cheese. Before we started the tour, I'd gone upstairs at their factory to learn more about the history of dairy and cheese in the region. Looking at all these pictures and thinking about working in a dairy farm growing up, the question arises around what makes someone want to start making cheese in the first place? My romance of farming it was leaving me because I'd been doing I'd 40 years. This is our, our 40th year that we've been involved with farming. We were intrigued about the milk we make because we're grass fed and we've been grazing our cows for over 20 years and we knew our milk was special and it is really, really a good product. And this is really the only way that we could actually sell our milk. It's difficult to sell bottled milk raw in New York State. And they, it's designed that way because they don't yeah. want us to do it. So we, we looked at cheese and we went to a cheese making course in Binghamton, New York. And we were in this little plant, you know, and we had our own little kettle of milk and we were adding the rennet and the culture and stirring it by hand and cutting it by hand. And, and it, you know, we basically drank the Kool-Aid there. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, even more intrigued, my wife 
you know, we went home and started making it in the kitchen, which is all, an all-day affair to make a piece of cheese about this big. Yeah. And so I really wanted to do something different. I wanted to stay active and engaged at an older age. I'll be 65 next May. And I thought this would be a good option. We were chugging away, you know, mulling this over. What we're going to do, what kind of ma cheese we wanted to make. We really didn't want to make cheddars and those types of things. So we joined as many organizations as we could or got as much information as we could about, about making cheese. And we joined the American Cheese Society, which is a national organization. Third year into this, this breakout session, the, the French were presenting this cheese they called Comte, which is this cheese right here. You know, they had samples and we were tasting it and they were talking about you know how the cows graze in the mountains and that type of thing and we tasted it we had that romantic moment I said this is the cheese this is it 2015 may 5th my birthday we started to build this plant and then uh, may 2016 may 5th to the day we made our first cheese and that's kind of the background of where we're at today if you want to do something and you really want to do it, do it. Don't, don't walk away and regret. What a great inspirational story and closing advice from Gary to leave with. Life is for taking chances. And before I left, I had to take a chance on the only all-cheese vending machine I've ever seen just outside the plant. Success. Cheese and Chisos made this a great day. Huge thanks to East Hill Creamery for taking me on a tour of their cheese factory. It was awesome and the cheese they make is delicious. You guys can visit easthillcreamery.com and order some directly from their website and they'll ship to you. I highly recommend that you do so. It is delicious. Now on to my final thoughts for this Chisos King Roper. This high-end ostrich boot is nearly everything that I would want in a boot like this. And I feel like the Chisos insole works better with this Roper style than it does in their previous models. I like how short the boot is, which lives up to its Roper name, but also how narrow the opening is. So it fits under so many different kinds of pants and jeans. And because it is just a little bit more narrow and shorter, I like how they tucked in the pull tab behind the lining so that there's less of a chance of it rubbing against your leg. Speaking of the red lining, on a previous Chisos that I tried, uh, this red lining would stain white socks a little bit. And I found that this red lining did a similar thing. I wanted to try it out again to see if I got similar stains and I did get some stains on white socks. The red does bleed onto some lighter color socks still. Not as bad as it did before, but it still does happen during the break-in process. So I would recommend wearing darker socks just in case. I can't say that it will happen to all white socks, but it did happen again to these. Uh, so you might want to wear darker socks if that's something that you cared about uh, just during the break-in process here. Let's talk about the break-in a little bit because this ostrich leather isn't quite as supple as some other ostrich leathers that I've tried. Now, that could be because ostrich is a natural animal, right? The leathers between the different animals will be different. That's just the nature of leather. Um, this is a little bit more thick than I've tried in the past and part of that also could be because of the liner and how much more thick it is compared to other brands. Um, but just know that you might need to break in this ostrich boot a little bit more than you've had to break in ostrich boots in the past from other brands. The fit at the heel is just a little bit more narrow in here, uh, which worked well for me because I have a narrow foot and I also got a little bit more toe room up here in the toe box because it does have that wider round roper toe. So I liked the toe room that I had, a little bit snug at the heel, uh, but I still did get the proper heel slip that you're supposed to get with a Western boot. I did have to use a boot jack more often than I usually do to get these boots off. And if you find yourself in a similar situation, uh, I do have a foldable boot jack, all aluminum, real durable, made here in the USA by Twisted Willow Fabrication that you can get at my store. The link is in the description. This is an awesome product, by the way, and I used it a lot taking these Chisos 
King Ropers off. I know many of you will have questions about the price point of this boot at $1,200 because so many other ostrich boots out there are half the price, if not less than half the price of this Chisos King Roper. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that so that you can decide whether it's worth it for you. I had a little bit of a sticker shock when I noticed the price of this boot as well because it's not often that I do videos of boots over $1,000. So I spoke with the owner of Chisos Boots, Will Roman, on the phone to understand the price a little bit better and he said it cost him four times as much to produce this boot from the bovine boots that he has right now, the number one, the number two, and the number five. This is also a traditionally made boot, so it has a channeled well in here. It has a 10 iron leather outsole and a leather counter, which are all difficult processes which increase the price of a boot significantly. When you get down into the $400 to $500 ostrich boot range, many times, not always, many times, the brand will use a cloth rib on the inside to attach the leather outsole and the welt, which is an okay process, but it might mean that you can't resole those boots as many times as you can with a traditional channeled welt. I really wouldn't consider brands that use those techniques to be competitors of Chisos though. I would consider higher end brands like Lucchese and Heritage Boots to be a Chisos competitor because they both use traditional techniques just like Chisos does and both of those brands have ostrich boots that are $1,200 plus. On top of that, this boot is all ostrich, not only full quill down here on the foot, but smooth ostrich on the top and the pull tabs, which increases the price again because ostrich is more expensive than goat or cowhide, which many other brands will use for the top and the pull tabs, which is completely reasonable, it just depends on what you're looking for. So if you're looking for a high-end traditionally made boot but aren't such a fan of the hard leather insole that are so common in those traditionally made boots, then the Chisos might be a good option for you because it does have that luxurious feeling, removable insole that's topped with leather. It feels great in this Roper boot too. Personally, I'm more of a fan of the traditional hard leather insole feeling but I know that's not the case with many of you out there. So this fills a unique niche in the market and I know many people will enjoy it. But what do you think about the Chisos King Roper? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching today. I think you're all awesome. Why don't you subscribe while you're here and I will see you guys around. Peace. As I walked out in the Chisos King Ropers, as I walked out in the Chisos one day, I felt all the comfort from their luxurious insole. Yes, the build and the ostrich of these Chisos are great. Yes. Thanks for watching today. Want you to check out my last video, Chisos, up here? Or I got a video down here about a song that I made. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Peace. Have a good one.